Oh boy, it's been a while. Good to see you. If uh, you know, if you've seen this show before, it's been a while. Um, well, if you've seen this show before, you know um, the feature is, of course, the guns and not my ugly mug. So, uh, but I, I will apologize if my mug, <laughs> I'll apologize now if my mug appears inadvertently in some of the shots. Um, so what's been happening, guys? I'm, I'm going to drink some coffee here. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, I think the last time I post was sort of during the winter or, or, or something like that. Right, so uh, it's it's the the summer has passed. It's now fall, and, uh, and here we are again. So welcome. Um, let's see. I have not been uh, ah, you know, maybe on average, maybe one picking up one new. Uh, gun a day uh, one new gun a day yeah right uh one a month maybe perhaps even every other month uh since i've last uh, spoke with you guys and um yeah what's happening is is the the prices on these things are going up and uh yeah they're kind of getting out of my range um to a certain extent, right? And of course, well, you know, anything over a hundred bucks for a BB gun, a Daisy or King BB gun, um, well, it starts kind of getting out of my range, right? Uh, I have paid up to that, maybe even more, certainly more for certain guns. Uh, a, a certain vintage uh, one but uh, I don't have deep pockets so <laughs> I'm usually looking out more for those $20, $30 deals um, which you can still find uh, if you're diligent but you know a lot of these like this is a, uh, a 102 a um, I think this is the Cub. Boy, sorry, my, my memory is already slipping. Um, 1960s, 1950s, 60s, probably. Uh, this is the Daisy Heat on uh, one. Here, maybe we can get some of that on there. I've shown this before, so, and uh, I've shown it in some better lighting, so you can you can just do a, a search term for the Daisy Heat on. Um, within my channel. Uh, You'll probably notice of all of them, this is uh, the one I enjoy the most. So, um, This is a short 102 and uh, essentially this is just a short stock put on a, a, a standard 102. So, uh, more of a down shot there yeah so this is my stand I, I have um, you know I have I don't know easily over 50 uh, of these um, Daisy rifles and uh, a good amount of the pistols perhaps even maybe up to 80 quiet you stay yeah uh, perhaps somewhere uh, and about 80 to 100, certainly 100 if I include the, the pistols, right? And uh, it's been over, I guess, maybe a two year period now, something like that. And, um, yeah, why, <laughs> why, uh, maybe it's a silly rhetorical question of why, uh, But I'll, I'll, I would like to go into it. 
Um, but before I do that, let me, uh, let me just talk about sort of uh, a dilemma, a little dilemma that I'm having here. And that is, you know, mostly, not exclusively, but, oh, uh, I'd say at least 80 to 90% of the guns that I've been collecting are daisies. I refer to this as um, the uh, the air gun uh, investigation and I an air gun review an air gun and you know, these are air guns air pistols air rifles but um, really it's daisies so I wanted to be inclusive because when I first started this channel. I wasn't quite sure, uh, you know, I thought I would be uh, collecting and, and showing off the, the collection as it were, which were all kinds of different, um, mostly pellet guns, yeah, a few BB guns, but mostly pellet guns. And, you know, I, I really uh, have fallen in love with these uh, uh pellet guns, air guns, and now BB guns. It's funny, I've sort of gone uh, back in the technology instead of forward, right? I mean, pellet guns, you've got rifled barrels and they're more accurate. They can shoot out further with better accuracy. Um, so why BB guns, right? Um, But yeah, over the past uh, you know year or two, um, it's mostly been daisies, and uh, and uh, as some of you already know, the the first daisy uh, was a brand new Chinese made, uh, yet all steel wood uh, model twenty five, right? The pump. And I just loved that thing. And why did I love it? Because one, it was quiet. It's a wonderful backyard shooter. You can, it hardly has any noise. Um, and accurate out to 50 yards. I mean, okay, you're going to do a little bit of a Kentucky windage uh, in your aiming, but you can still hit out hit a, a shovel head out at 50 yards with a, with a BB gun, a super quiet BB gun. So that got me looking into the daisies and then the vintage daisies. And, uh, you know, I think I went, learned a lot from uh, daisyking.com and, um, and from uh, the Daisy Museum. Those are some great source materials. Um, I bought some Daisy books as well, but not the not the three hundred dollar Gerber one or something. Yeah, it's out of print, and I see it every once in a while online for somewhere between one to three hundred dollars. So, yeah, I, no, I don't think I've I've seen it for a hundred. If I saw it for a hundred, I think I probably would buy it. Um, if I yeah, if I had the money. Um, so, yeah, so here I am in somewhat of a dilemma because I call this the AIR show. AIR show, yes. The Air Gun Investigation and Review Show. And I'm not really, I, my interests have really kind of, uh, narrow down to BB guns now and predominantly vintage Daisy BB guns. Um, and so now what to do? Do I keep calling this the AIR show when in fact it's really a Daisy BB gun fan, fanboy uh, uh, show? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of show you what I 
uh, keep around. You know, most of the 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 guns that I collect, I, uh, I I shoot them, I clean them up, I shoot them, um, kind of establish a little relationship with them, and then I put them away, and um, that's so they don't get all banged up. Uh, I'll usually try to put them in a nice uh, case of some sort, and uh, and then I put them away. And you know, if I if I miss them, I'll I'll pull one out. Usually, I'll I'll trade them out. But really, there are some favorites, some go tos that um, that seem to stick around. As much as I pull the other ones out and play with them, uh, there are things that I. Uh, really like about certain vintage guns and they're not the oldest ones they're not the it tends to be maybe the uh, 50s and 60s really which is interesting yeah it seemed like uh, Daisy had some really solid quality uh, going on in uh, the 50s and 60s now that's not to say they didn't have the solid quality going on back but prior to that, um, how would I, how, how would I, uh, well, uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say is they're older, right? So, you know, something from the 19, 1920s, I've got, I've got a gun from 1917. Uh, I don't think we can really expect those to work quite as well. Um, a gun that's you know a hundred years old um, so yeah the guns from the 30s I first started collecting the, the model 25s from the, from the 30s 1917 1933 1937 some of some of some of those um, so they're older maybe they would have worked as well but they're older um, don't know I'm, I, I'm not an expert in the, the uh, daisy ballistics. But w perhaps w we'll become expert in the, the ballistics. I, I haven't even gone in that direction yet, although I have promised to do so. Um, so my favorite is this little 102 from the 1960s. It really is, of all the pumps and lever actions... Uh, and the daisies and all the various uh, years. Um, it's small, so it's sort of like a, a carbine, 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 uh, carabiner, car carbine, <laughs> whatever. And uh, it doesn't have, it's got a nice solid, uh, I've gone over this with you guys, but it's got a nice solid uh, rear sight, front sight, right? Nice and solid, nice metal, no safeties other than your fingers, right? And pointing it in the right direction. And um, uh, this is aluminum, it's not cast iron. Like uh, stuff from pre-war. Uh, 19, right before we went into the war, we were using cast iron. Then that all went into the war, so we uh, they switched to aluminum. At World War Two, right? Uh, post World War Two, and um, as some of you know, that Daisy wasn't making. Uh, they were making guns during World War One, but not during World War Two because they were commissioned to make. Uh, parts, sight parts for bombers, I believe. Um, so yeah, this is this is one of my favorites. Let's see, let me see if I can miss something from here. Ah, oh, yeah, see, missed. There we go. Uh, that was a hit at. Oh, I'd say uh, 20 yards. Yeah, 25 yards. <clears throat> so this is one of my favorites. I just I I, I rarely put this in just uh, you know into the safe. Um, 
it's got a nice convenient oiling hole which they didn't uh, do until I believe you know the 60s or so and like I said it's all solid what is interesting about this is look at that a nice little polymer that's put into there insert that uh, that keeps a nice stay on the lever. That lever is nice and strong in there. That's incredible. Yeah, they're just little things, you know. Now, it's a black painted barrel, but, you know, uh, that's all right. I don't see any rust on it. So they uh, achieved a goal there, which is to, how are they gonna stop these from rusting? I'm gonna try to hit, this I certainly shouldn't hit. This is out at 30 or 35. Try it again. Let's try missing again. Hit, hit, yeah, yeah. This hits out at 50 yards, just fine. That was a hit out at 35 yards. Let me see, 25. Yeah, easily 35 yards. So, of the non daisies, well, let me get back to this. This is a. Uh, a fairly recent acquisition and um, these are still affordable you can get um, these for anywhere from 20 30 40 bucks I've seen people charge up to 60 for them um, and then the same thing here these this is not a Daisy this is a a, a, a mark marksman right? And the, this marksman is a take on the old, um, uh, geez, okay, the, the name of the, of the original of these slips me. But uh, I have a good collection of them, just forgot the name. The uh, Morton Harris, there it is. The uh, Morton Harris originally designed this and um, then it eventually went into production under marksman and they were put out in california um los angeles was the first marking then um huntington beach and then um geez names uh uh yeah and then another uh not redondo geez sorry guys i i, I, have, I have to consume more coffee for, uh, for a proper amount of memory to kick in. Torrance, there it is. Torrance was the last place. And, I, and of course, I'm sure China puts them out. Um, the most recent version. Not definite, but I'm pretty sure China puts them out. Um, but let's not talk about this marksman. <laughs> Oh, by the way, yeah, these you can pick up. You can still pick these up for 10 bucks. I just picked a an, an, uh, Morton Harris, an original from the 1950s. Just picked one up on eBay for $11. That's crazy. I think I have about eight of these. Or uh, These, oh, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I might even already have about 10 of these. And this one I didn't have, I finally got. So I'm probably going to stop picking these up and uh, I might even start uh, selling uh, some of the copies but I want to I keep one from each area and this is the Huntington Beach I didn't have Huntington Beach so um, I should wind up with about four or five of these after I um, you know, get rid of the, the other ones that I have so back to this this Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think is the best, the best um, pistol. <clears throat> Again, one. So, how do I qualify that? Um, well, it's cool. It's made in America still. That's awesome. Uh, this is actually made in. Um, let me see it. Rogers, thank you. Rogers, Arkansas. More coffee. And it's all metal. If you notice, everything on the table here 
It's all metal. There's no plastic. Except for that little, little tiny, that, that's, that's acceptable right there. That's even desirable, really. I mean, think about it, this has been around since the uh, 60s, 50s, 60s. And look, the thing is still wonderful. All right, so. Look. You know, this was probably made more 70s or 80s, maybe. I haven't, I haven't really um, dated this yet. Um, but, yeah, it's made in Rogers. And, uh, oh, and I just got one of these, the Power Line 880. Got the original one from the 70s steel receiver so uh i think that's about as late as i'm gonna go i still am looking for a model 25 uh which one am i looking for from there i'm still looking for one of the model 25 like uh well like you know a more recent 107 when i say recent like from the 70s yeah with the monte carlo yeah plastic um stock <sighs> yeah i'm still looking for a, a one of those priced nicely but i found one that's in really beautiful working condition looking condition found one for oh i think you know maybe 40 50 bucks something like that so uh I'm excited about receiving that let me see let's look at these other ones i haven't gotten one of these yet these are more recent they're all plastic, you know. So they're more recent, 70s, right? 80s maybe. I think these came out in the 70s and this might be from the 80s. Um, so I don't have one of these. I'd like to find one, but uh, it's been challenging finding one of these uh, at a reasonable price. These go for pretty high prices. And I swear that they do make a model of this wood, like a special edition or commemorative edition. I'd swear they do. Maybe they don't make these, uh, have a model with the wood. So this model, 1894, I'd really like to get one of these. Um, and especially if it's, if they make them in wood, which I'd swear they do. Anyway, um, this... The 1938 Red Rider, yeah, yeah, it's okay. I, I have a couple of these, one or two, I believe. Yeah, these are more recent, and uh, this is where they started using, um, I'm not sure if it's this one, they started replacing the aluminum with plastic. Right? So now of the pistols here, uh, I'm not familiar with any of these. Um, and I think they're all perhaps CO2, and I'm not a big fan of CO2. I've got some CO2, but I, I really don't use them. I'm too cheap. I shoot too much. It would be too expensive, you know? And really, that's what got me into this stuff, is I love shooting, target shooting, plinking. That's, uh, I, I'm not really into hunting, or I've done it before, but I'm not really into hunting. Um, I've done tactical shooting, uh, but again, you know, not so much into that as much as I am just into uh, plinking and so that's what got me into air rifles um, but then I realized that uh, I don't need to hit stuff out at a hundred yards I, I uh, my backyard isn't that big I only need to hit stuff out at about 50 yards and in fact um, I mean, I could probably do about a hundred yard stretch, but then, um, I don't know. There's, there's, uh, there's, you know, control issues, you know, backstop. You have to have sufficient backstop at a, at a big distance. So a shorter distance, um, serve as more permissive of, a, of a, of a decent backstop safety, et cetera. And then lower velocity. So if I have a high velocity and uh, and it misses, uh, ricochets. You know, I've got neighbors and stuff. So um, that's just not tenable. So 
it turned out that even pellet guns, even though you can find them, uh, a lot of them are kind of loud, but you can find a good amount of pellet guns that they have uh, suppressors uh, on them, noise suppressors built within them. Um, but again, uh, overpower and um, yeah, so that's what led me to the uh, 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 you know buying from Pyramid Air a uh, Model Twenty Five, just to try it out. It's cheap, thirty, thirty, forty some bucks, right? So, uh, and I loved it. I loved it. It was incredible. You notice I don't have any Model Twenty Fives here. That's because I've kind of fell in love with, uh, well, the guns that you're seeing here. And, uh, you know, and this is personal preference. Yeah, you know, this is short. I'm sure this would bother a lot of people, short, and uh, even a shorter uh, uh, sight radius, right? Uh, but I, I like it. It kind of gives a little bit of, more of a challenge uh, of trying. I'm only trying to hit stuff out at 50 yards, too, so it's nice to give yourself a little bit of a challenge. Um, but this... This, believe it or not, is hitting out at 50 yards as well with the proper uh, you know, uh, uh, compensating, right? And the thing is, guys, with these, when you shoot these, they're not going to, uh, they're not going to go much further beyond where you're actually trying to hit. And, um, and you're, as they go out, they're losing, they're quickly losing velocity. So um, they're probably not, they probably wouldn't even uh, go through a tin can, you know, probably not out at 50 yards. I don't think so. I could try, but it would be very challenging to hit a tin can out at 50 yards with a, a shovel head. Yes, a tin can, that would be a challenge. Uh-oh, I think you've given me an idea. All right, so... This is the newest acquisition, although I have uh, a good handful of these. And again, because they're so dang cheap, these are the only things left that are kind of cheap. A lot of the 25s that you can pick up for, you know, the Model 25 pump daisies, you used to be able to get those for somewhere around, you know, 1930s for around 100 bucks. Now they're going for more like 300 bucks. So I'm out, right? I'm not going to buy I'm not going to be buying any more of those. Um, and then I started looking into these, right? Because they're, um, these were affordable. Um, yet the prices were going up and are going up. Now, 102s are going for 100 bucks and, or more. And these were, these were selling for 10, 20 bucks. Uh, yes, yeah, so this, the 188. It's solid, loads here. It doesn't, uh, uh, I think it takes yep, 24. It takes an honest 24 in there. There's nothing in there right now. I think I'll put some in there. And um, that's way more than 24. Yeah, all metal. And for I, I just saw one of these, I think for 10, 10 bucks. Now, especially unrifled BB guns. Uh, the trick is look for the terms shoots good, shoots nice, good shooter, <laughs> stuff like that. It's no guarantee, but that's what that's the kind of thing you want to hear and then you also ask a lot of times they they won't honor it but you ask hey does it shoot well can you hit a piece of paper from you know across the room with it yeah you're not asking them to do any great tests but does the thing shoot right so there's the uh, safety side the trigger safety right there and uh it hasn't been cocked yet. So, yeah, this thing hits out at 50. It's incredible. Um, 
Now, I would say that I, almost every BB gun I have, because it travels in sort of a circular. So depending on where the target is within that uh, path, um, it depends on, you know, where it's going to hit. In other words, um, if I'm trying to hit something uh, out at 50 yards or 20 yards, um, I'll probably have to aim somewhat above to the left. In most cases, yeah, slightly above and to the left. So, uh, yeah, that, that, it, not all the time though, it, depending on where it is. Sometimes I can, um, it, at a closer ranges between 10 and 20 yards, I can, uh, uh aim at the, uh, aim exactly at what I'm shooting at uh, but you know it's kind of funny if you bring it closer you may have to aim at, uh, you know compensate differently or further so uh, but that's not a big deal that, that's not a concern with me and that's actually interesting and you can also what's nice with the low velocity let's just see even saying what the velocity is this is back in the day when they in the, in the 80s when they didn't even know what velocity meant, right? Back when the wheel was still square. Um, no, they're not giving a velocity on this, but it can't be more than 200 feet per second, right? So this is interesting. Uh, if you've seen these before, but it's an action, a lever, an under lever, it loads it, you manually push that in, take the safety off, and let's see what I can miss. Oh, that was a nice miss. Uh-oh. Now that has happened before. I'm going to do that again. No, there's, some, there's one in there. All right. Wow, that's going way far right from how I can see it. Okay, now we're getting more on target. Ooh. Now, needless to say, shooting out at 20 yards is a little bit more challenging with a pistol. 20, 25 yards. Oh, geez. And uh, this thing is not... There we go. You know, some days are strange. Uh, it could be the weather, but um, sometimes this seems to be, shoot more consistently than others. Uh, let me see. Now, of course, we always have to factor in user. Oh, now I'll tell you what, I don't think it's me. There we go. Yeah, I don't think it's me. It's just kind of shooting a little wily. But take that in the, into consideration when you pick one of these up. That, um, you know, give, give it a good run to see. I've gotten, like, for instance, this. And it was almost shooting a uh, point of aim. And uh, then it's just shoot it more than sometimes not, right? <laughs> so, um but I'd say that they are affectionately um, in, um, inconsistent. Like you can see, uh, if you can see this, bring this out there. If you can see the flight path. Oh, that's, that's a common one is uh, forgetting to load it. That's okay, you just put air in and load it. It doesn't double feed when you do that. Oh, man. I am compensating all the way left. But then if I compensate too much, it goes somewhere left of Detroit. Ooh, that went right through. Ooh, that was... That was me for sure. Ah, that was me again. I'm jerking the trigger. 
I'm rushing it. There we go. So yeah, sometimes this has shot better. Um, but still, hitting out at 25. You know, with a with a firearm, that would be difficult, right? So you have to kind of put things into perspective there. If I were shooting that with a firearm, I would probably have about the same success rate, you know? Out at 25 yards with a... Uh, okay, not with a long... If I had an equal firearm with, a, with this kind of barrel, probably wouldn't miss. However, most uh, carry firearms are usually about this big. And yeah, you're going to miss at 25 yards hitting a small target. A little, you know, shovel head, small shovel head, right? So you're probably going to miss every now and then. <laughs> so... You put it in perspective, these are just fine. And do you see how quiet, hear how quiet that is? Nobody is going to be complaining about you plinking in your backyard, right? The atmosphere sounds are louder than, than the little put from this. Now, let's get to this. Now, you got to love, hate this. First of all, it's, it's again, I've, I've covered this before. So, um, you know, if you, if you want to see my other videos on this, just search for um, yeah, Marksman Pistol. Marksman. Yeah. So, about the Marksman. Okay, so, <laughs> a lot of people like to uh, make fun that, this is just like the uh, the gun that's modeled after the 45, meaning that it's uh, inaccurate and whatnot. Now I'm not going to make that joke because yeah, you know, I like the 45. So, um, oh. <laughs> I'm making a video if you don't want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go, saved. Um, yes, yeah, so if, you know, if you have a, a 45, this will probably fit the accoutrement tree, uh, like, you know, your, your holster. Uh, it'll fit, because it's like a 45. So, um, however, uh, I don't know about it. 45s being inaccurate, I think the more modern 45s are just fine. So, but this particular uh, um, BB gun, it, it's actually more than a BB gun. It, it will shoot, uh, I think it will shoot pellets and it will shoot uh, darts as well. Yeah. But it doesn't shoot them far. It doesn't shoot them very hard. I think let me see that that target is about oh geez 15 how many yards one two one three four six sorry i'm kind of choking i'd say that's about no more than 20 yards out there's that, that frying pan out there so um here, let's go over how this thing works. It has a, it's like a safety, which is actually a slide release on this, but on the 45, that would be a safety. And you got your trigger safety here too. You pull the, the, uh, the, the what, what, what would, we, would we call this in the BB gun world? I don't know, we'll just call it the slide, pull them back. And that allows you to, whoa open up and there's all there's already some in here i think you'd put like 10 in here if i'm not mistaken 10 or 20 no i don't know how many um but sort of limited just like the real thing and it just holds it just in there like that and you put in the top one it will load it in here and uh shoot it out of this this is the barrel <laughs> what is that 
one and a half inch barrel. It's ridiculous. And that's why it's not very accurate. All right, so let's see if we can hit anything. Safety off, push to fire. All right. Now I really have to compensate here, but let's see where we go. Yeah, that didn't hit. Let's see. Ooh. Huh. I cannot see where that's going. Oh, okay. I saw that. Went a little left. There we go. So that's not bad. You know? And so for close range and even closer, it gets better as you go as you go closer. But at close range. And I'm only compensating just slightly. Uh, I'm aiming at the top right portion of the pan of the target. And uh, and then it's pretty much hit in the center. So that's not bad. That's not bad. As I, like you said, if you bring some closer uh, a, a cardboard box, this is just enough to go through one layer of the cardboard box so it will keep all your ammo. It's nice. So even though this is not powerful and not amazingly accurate by any stretch, um, and some of them are bad. I mean, some of them are just not fun to shoot at all. Uh, uh, they're not consistent enough for one reason or another. So, um, so you're looking for a good shooter. If you can find a good shooter, and a good shooter is one that has a certain amount of accuracy right a certain amount of accuracy and a certain uh, amount of consistency that's really to me the the word is consistent shot consistency right because if you know it's going left or right well you can always adjust and in shooting any even shooting firearms you have to make those adjustments especially as you're shooting out further now, they might not be as pronounced as a BB gun, but that's okay. In a BB gun, you're, you're actually learning about the flight path and, uh, um, and things like that, right? You're actually able to see and, and also... Uh, the safety factor of working with these things, even over pellet guns, uh, can't shouldn't be uh, understated. You know, if you if you shoot a lot, the more you shoot, the uh, I guess the numbers would say the more you shoot, the more chances of of a mistake happening. And I, I probably true to an extent. I'd say the more you shoot, the better you get at handling but i think uh, there's a point at which you become too comfortable especially if you shoot a lot and so this really uh when you're working with bb guns especially these low velocity uh daisy bb guns that are uh, or there's a marksman but first of all you got something that was made here in america if if you know if you care about that at all, I don't know. And all metal, I mean, and the price of, uh, uh, still at this point that you can get these all metal, low velocity, fun guns, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 bucks. You can't, now the, uh, the plastic guns that you got, the modern guns all pretty much made in China. Yeah, that's what they're caught. You, you're going to spend that much, 34. And, and these guns are going to go up in value, no doubt about it. I've been watching them all go up in value. And so these are just for more. The, these are still affordable. If you see a Model 25 or an old uh, Daisy Red Rider number uh, 111, Model 111, Model 30. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Model 40, number 111. 
Um, if you see those and you can get them for under a hundred bucks, man, definitely grab them. Uh, if they're good shooters, uh, to me, if it's not a decent shooter, then it's, it's not worth having. I don't care if it's an antique. Oh yeah. Don't put these up on the wall. Okay. That's what's great about collecting these is you can use them. All right. If you're not going to use them, then, well, yeah, buy, buy the, buy the cheap broken ones. Cause these vintage ones that aren't functional, you could get a 1901 that's uh, unfunctional for less than a hundred bucks. Yeah. But uh, I don't know what use that would be. And in fact, some of the early, early guns are somewhat problematic. I, I've got a few of them that, but you don't want to shoot them because they're so old that you feel that by shooting them a lot, you're going to break them. So with those, I shoot them every once in a while just to make sure they're, they're receiving a little bit of love. But um, yeah, from about 1930s, certainly by 1940s, uh, I, I feel a little bit more comfortable shooting those. And uh, 60s, man, 50s and 60s, I think they just had it down by then. They're just, they're solid, they're, they're, they feel nice and solid, they're shooting strong. So, um, and of course, poor Morton Harris, uh, that was an idea that I think, well, hey, poor Morton Harris, I don't know, these, these things are still around from 1950 when it was made in Hollywood. All right, I think that's one of the markings too. Is it Hollywood? Yeah, I think we're Hollywood, Beverly Hills. That's right. There's Los Angeles, Los Angeles number 25, Beverly Hills, Huntington Beach, and uh, Torrance. I think that's the lineup of these. And then, of course, the Chinese ones, the plastic Chinese ones now, which I don't have any of those. I, I, Again, I uh, try to keep with the uh, older vintage ones. Now, it's not to say that the plastic ones don't shoot well. They do. Um, you know, the, uh, yeah, the, the plastic guns, even the plastic that they're putting on the, the current daisies that are made in China or made wherever they're made. Um, like I said, that's what got me into these. So they shoot just fine in some cases maybe even better i don't know i don't collect those <laughs> um, but i'm having more than enough fun with these the ammo is cheap look at this four thousand four thousand for like 10 bucks 12 bucks 11 12 bucks something like that nine bucks the eight bucks. I think I got this for eight bucks. Four thousand for eight bucks. I'm pretty sure that's what I paid for. Uh, all right. Uh, is that everything? Yeah. Yeah. I I, I did want to talk about just the how wonderful it is to be able to shoot every day you know without the concerns of uh the high costs and whatnot and then collecting to be able to collect these you know to have the same uh collection uh in firearms so many problems first cost then ammo costs so that's cost and um then you gotta store them make sure they're properly all properly stored and then you gotta make sure that they uh you know, stay oiled and well maintained. You can't just keep storing. I mean, it gets really problematic, right? Got a bunch of firearms. The more firearms you have, I think that's the issue. The more firearms you have, the more likely something bad can happen. You know. Uh, again, I'm not anti-firearm. I'm just pro. You got to be a very responsible firearm owner. Right. I don't know. I don't know how many people out there are really all that responsible. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of responsible people out there. So just saying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think a lot of people shouldn't have driver's license. So that gives you a clue. Um, now, and then the, uh, the satisfaction of, um, of collecting you know, these, these historical, they're really historical 
I've said this before. You know, those uh, Model 25s, they were used for training in World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, Korean War. I kid you not. Look it up. So, they have history. These guns go back to the late 1800s. So, if you got the money, you can actually go that far back and collect. I think they, they run anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000, depending. Um, and if you don't have a lot of money, but you want a piece of Americana, you can still pick these 19, uh, 1930s, 1940s guns up. You can still pick them up for under 100 bucks. And they only go up in value, so that is certainly uh, a good thing. Unlike firearms, which don't seem to be going up in value, they seem to be going down in value. So I think BB guns in particular, not pellet guns, but BB guns, are the way of the future, of a very advanced future. I mean, you know, Imagine the amount of trigger time you can have with a BB gun as opposed to the restrictions of a pellet gun or, a, of course, a firearm. You can shoot all day long, all night long. If you want, you can even shoot these indoors and set up a, uh, just a cardboard box with a little something in it to, uh, to stop the BB from going all the way through, depending on how close you are, right? So, and this is really fun to shoot. It's low velocity, uh, shooting indoors at close range, very fun. Um, you know, 10 feet away, wonderful. Um, Airsoft is kind of cool for indoors, and that's probably the best thing for indoors, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's nice to have one go-to. This is nice, I'd say, from 10 feet to about 10 yards or 20, well, yeah, 15. 15 yards, maybe. Yeah. And then this, out to 40 to 50 yards, right? Uh, with, with a little skill. All right. So, uh, well, thanks for joining me, man. Uh, I don't know. I think it, I'm going to try to change the name of this channel. Probably, I'm not going to say what. I'll, I'll just change it. I think I'm going to change it uh, to suit more of what it is that I'm doing here. And uh, if I can't change it, I might even um, start a new channel. So hopefully I don't have to do that. Uh, but if I do, I will announce it on this channel first, what the new channel will be, if I have to uh, start a whole new channel. Hopefully not. All right. Well, um, hey, uh, let's, let's not be strangers. I'll, uh, the winter's coming, and uh, I don't know. I think that's kind of the season, isn't it? One of the fall, winter season tis the season to do videos uh on daisy bb guns right this summer it's just it's hot right it's hot everybody's doing stuff so uh okay well uh hope you're all happy healthy and um and prospering in this wonderful world of ours okay i'll see you next time